I sued the SSS and awarded four million naira damages. Uh, Erufai coming after Peter will be on social media and also on Saturday, uh, not done with the tweet of Friday, Erufai continued in another tweet. He said, any person that doesn't recognize the human right of every citizen to move freely live and work in any part of Nigeria, but implies that though foreigners can observe elections in his state, other Nigerians may only do so in their states of origins, is not fit to be VP of Nigeria. Uh, again, Erufai on uh, Peter Obi's matter over the weekend, and then uh, reactions are pouring in already. Senator Sheo Sani tweeting said, uh, an ethnic bigot is a lesser evil than a divisively religious one. Uh, Sheo Sani weighing in on the controversy of Erufai and Peter Obi over the weekend. Then uh, we saw from Twitter user Akai Bobe, the statesman. Uh, Akai Bobe, the statesman, is someone who tweets uh, uh, using football as a metaphor for analyzing political events. This was what he tweeted. He said, uh, Kaduna Bond striker Erufai has been assigned a new role at Lifeless FC. He is to mark Peter Obi and damage his prolific form with awful tackles. When a club striker begins to play as defender, you know the game is lost and relegation is imminent. <laughs> from Akai Bube, the statesman, from Demola Raju, we saw this tweet. Uh, Why would anyone be deliberately playing up Peter Obi in a race where the only former vice president of Nigeria for eight solid years is the flag bearer of the major alternative party? They dug and found nothing but desperate for anything. They zoomed in on his ethnicity. Shame. From the Mola Olari Waju, we saw that tweet. And from uh, Dr. Omano Edigeji tweeting at Omano E. If it was Erufai that deported people from a particular ethnic group as Peter Obi did to the houses, some people would have cried to high heavens. Now they are defending Obi. Erufai is a patriot. Under his administration, there is no state of origin but place of residence from uh, that Twitter is. And then also from the, the Godfather, Ayoba, tweeting said that Peter Obi was on record to have said that Erufai deserved the barbaric treatment meted to him by the DSS under Jonathan because Anambra is not Casina. Same Peter Obi as governor deported Northerners and forced them to carry ID cards in their own country. Life comes at you first. Uh, that's from Ayob the Godfather. But did Peter Obi really do that? Well, let's take a look at more tweets from Nigerians. From KC Niger tweeting said that Peter Obi did not deport Northerners. Peter Obi didn't detain Erufai. SSS did because Erufai wasn't accredited for the election. Let's not let Erufai get away with his divisiveness, ethnic and religious bigotry. We must curtail people like him bent on tearing Nigeria apart. From Casey Niger, we saw that one from Afri Sferica. A man that has not been able to improve the lot of the state is taking pot shots at another man that took his stage to tops in education and left money in the bank for the state. In all honesty, Erufa is not near Peter Obi's size. No pun. <laughs> Then, uh, of course, uh, from H.O. Kike, we saw this tweet. Uh, Peter Obi has them rattled, to be very honest. They can't say he's corrupt, so it's tribalism they are now using. But they support lifeless, who divided the country into 97 and 5%. Uh, these are the comments of Nigerians on social media. From Mr. Stanley Wabia, we saw this tweet. Uh, have been Googling everywhere. There's no news report of when Peter Obi ever deported Northerners. There's no... Okay, let's take that tweet again. I've been Googling everywhere. There's no news report of when Peter Obi ever deported Northerners. All I'm seeing everywhere is Fashola deports Northern beggars. Fashola is currently an APC federal minister. And from, from uh, Kingsley underscore zero one, we saw this tweet. Uh, Fashola deported hundreds of Northerners, yet he is a darling in the North. No proof that Peter Obi deported a single Northerner, yet he's been labored anti not. We are, in, we are in force. This has nothing to do with Peter B. And we keep wondering why IPOB is loved in the Southeast. And the uh, posers are uh, there. And then, of course, uh, Peter B., the man who has been accused of being a tribal bigot, has responded. He said, uh, from this, uh, as, as you can see in this report by Daily Post, OB to verify you were arrested in Anambra for coming to rig election. Let's take a look at excerpts from that report. OB, who spoke to journalists during a youth program at Nehu, we said, uh, quote, what His Excellency Governor Nasir Erufai said about me has been brought to my attention. I believe that as we grow older and are saddled with more responsibilities, we are expected to become circumspect in our thinking and avoid recklessness in our speeches and utterances. End quote. Uh, and the report says, uh, continues, said that concerning the claim that he was arrested on the election day in Anambra, Obi said, quote, I am aware that during the said election, he referred to 
security agents merely restricted his movement because he has no business being in Anambra, as I would not have any been in Kaduna on an election day, end quote. Peter will be responding officially there to Malam Nasir Erufai. And also during the weekend, we saw this report that filtered into the social media. DSS agents raided Atiku's private jet as he landed in Nigeria from his trip uh, uh, to Dubai. And that issue got Nigerians also talking. Let's take a look at uh, the reports and the tweets that followed. Uh, Atiku's jets searched by DSS operators. DSS operators raid Atiku's private jet upon upon return from Dubai. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the tweet. The, the, the presidential candidate of the PDP himself tweeted announcing this development. He said, uh, I arrived to Abuja this morning to a search by agents of the state aimed at intimidating me and my staff. I am committed to building a Nigeria where no citizen is intimidated by agents of state who are paid to protect them. Together, let's get Nigeria working again. Uh, but Nigerians are reacting to that tweet already. Uh, from Real Joe 90, we saw this tweet. So, agents of the state are only permitted to search ordinary civilians and not Atiku and his gang, Abi. Are you above the law? Is this how you want to become president? By politicizing every genuine action of the government? And your blind followers are not even helping you. Shame. From Real Joe 90 tweeting. And then let's take a look at uh, other comments uh, from Mdulewe tweeting said that this is a big shame. My question is, was this how Jonathan tried to intimidate Buhari during the campaigns? We must be very careful with the kind of precedence we are setting. Buhari wants to destroy all our institutions. Let's get Nigeria working again. Uh, more reactions are from Amira Badu tweeting said that everybody gets such, sir. Turns out you are not as special as you thought you were. By criticizing this, are you directly telling us that under your, are you indirectly telling us that under your leadership there will be different laws for us, the masses, and you, the elites? Wrongly crying foul here is not the way, sir. Um, from Amiri Badu, we saw that tweet, uh, and from Reno Mokri, we saw this tweet. Why did Wari order such a large military force to surround and search the plane of Atiku, the presidential candidate of the PDP? Was he hoping? that they'll find his non-existing WAC certificate? Our security should face Boko Haram, not Atiku. From Renal Mokri, we saw that tweet, and of course, uh, more reactions from Nigerians on that issue. Let's take a look at uh, if the, the Nigerian government has actually come out to clarify what happened in a statement released via at Aso Rock, the official hand of the Nigerian government. Uh, we saw these uh, yesterday, press release, all passengers should submit themselves to checks at our airports, Minister Hadi Sirika, it was a statement uh, issued by um, Hadi Sirika on behalf of the Nigerian government. And part of that statement also generated some con con conversations yesterday in the social media. Let's read part of that statement that said that the claim by Atiku is a mischievous attempt to grab the headlines. Nigerians need to know that one of the resolutions of the Atiku team at their recently concluded Dubai retreat was to embark on scaremongering. This is one of such. Nigerians are now asking why the Nigerian government is being partisan in its explanation of what happened to Atiku. They were expected to just make a statement clarifying the development, but they have now come out to say that uh, Atiku and, and his group in Dubai planned uh, to engage on the campaign of scaremongering. Let's take a look at this tweet from Henro 006. Uh, the fact that the FG tweeted this shows clearly that they are guilty as charged. To further buttress the fact that they were indeed lying, they included the propaganda that Atiku and his team had agreed on scaremongering while in Dubai. Useless FG. Then we take a look at uh, more tweets uh, that uh, followed this issue yesterday. Let's take a look at more tweets from Nigerians. From Fedo Right, we saw this tweet. How do you know what they discussed in Dubai? You are trying to clear the air to justify your government, yet you bring in propaganda. This shows how dubious and desperate your government is. Nigerians are wise now. Uh, the statement is, it was issued by Adi Sirika on behalf of the Nigerian government as aviation minister, and he claimed in that statement that uh, Atiku and his group in Dubai had plans to engage on a campaign of scaremongering, which Nigerians are saying uh, they didn't think that was professional on the side of the government. From Bifamna tweeting said that he did not need to attempt to grab the headlines. He had grabbed the headlines long ago. Not just the headlines, Atiku has grabbed our hearts. Atiku late 2019. Reactions of Nigerians uh, to the development of uh, DSS raiding Atiku's jet. And from uh, Totori DB, we saw this tweet. At the moment I read Atiku's tweet, I knew it wasn't true. Melodrama is part of their strategy. Saraki did it, Dino Melai stars in it. Ben Bruce calls embassies. Ikurimadu says assassination attempt. Atiku's angle is security agents harassing me. 
expect more in days ahead. And then uh, we take a look at uh, more comments on this matter. Uh, let's take a look at the next tweet from Harin XC tweet and said that, how come you know the resolution in Dubai? I thought government of Nigeria should be politically neutral. Uh, again, uh, bringing the issue of uh, uh, the, the claim by the Nigerian government that uh, Atikwa and his group uh, were planning uh, to engage on the campaign of scaremongering. From Ben Ray Bruce, we saw this tweet, uh, this is a lie and you people are not doing Buhari government justice. I have traveled with Heichi Atiku and he has never had this type of invasion of his plane. This was a dictatorial act to intimidate Atiku because of his momentum. Fess up to the truth. Uh, Senator Ben Murray Bruce uh, tweeting uh, in response uh, to that development uh, that we saw over the weekend. And then, uh, of course, we move on to another issue that uh, trended yesterday heavily in the social media. Superstar Banky W is going into politics. He's running for the House of Reps in Lagos State, precisely a Tiosa constituency, federal con constituency, and that uh, got Nigerians also talking. Let's take a look at uh, uh, how that panned out. He actually shared a tweet uh, about his declaration to run for the House of Reps. Uh, let's take a look at that tweet that he shared. Uh, this was a tweet he, which he tweeted and said, the hashtag Hope19. So you can see his uh, flyer, his poster, and then he added a statement. Uh, but Nigerians are talking already. Let's take a look at some of the reactions uh, to Banky W's uh, political aspiration moving from music now to politics. Let's take a look at uh, the tweets and the responses to Banky W's aspiration to run for the House of Reps of uh, the Etiosa Federal Constituency of Lagos State. Uh, from uh, F. Shock Kingfisher, we saw this tweet, I am personally averse to politics, especially that of my country, but we cannot keep complaining that governments are bad if good people decide not to run. Destructive criticism is easy. Leadership is hard. Best wishes for your journey, Banky W. And then uh, we saw more reactions also. Let's take a look at the next tweet from Abang Messi. Banky's entry is exciting, but it shouldn't have started much. It should have started much earlier. That notwithstanding, he should start rocking the booth now. He doesn't have time at all. Nothing gives me greater joy like politicians who actually do go door to door knocking for votes. This thing isn't safe. From Abang Mercy, words of advice to Banky W. Down there from Lola underscore OY, we saw this tweet. Uh, I'm just here wondering if David Doe and his uncle, with all their online noise, couldn't win their state with PDP. Where's the hope for Banky W with his party? Plus, he really shouldn't depend on his fellow celebrity friends' endorsement. Wish him all the best, though. From Lola underscore OY, words of advice to Banky W as he steps into the political ring of politics. And then uh, from Chingwe, on Umele, we saw this tweet uh, uh, Banky W, I'm currently watching you live on TV. Man, this is the real change. My PVC is ready for use. And then uh, more tweets yesterday from Nigerians. Let's take a look at uh, from AOG underscore JC. We saw this tweet. Uh, I have nothing against Banky W, but why make your political intention known in less than three months to the election? Interesting question, though. And then um, we take a look at uh, more tweets yesterday that we saw on this Banky W's aspiration uh, from Adero Boa for tweeting said, uh, Babajide Ibrahim Obanikoro, the son of the soy, correct grassroots politician. He gave APC a run for their money when he was in PDP, one-time chairman elect. Sincerely, Bank EW would only try. The demographic factors would favor both candidates, but we all know the winner. Uh, referring to Obani Koro, Senator Obani Koroson, who is also running for House of Reps uh, in a Tiosa federal constituency under the APC. And then uh, from Ogbeni Dikpo, wishing Bank EW all the very best. We need more young and capable folks in the House of Representatives. Uh, wish you Bank you the very best on his latest journey in politics. And then we move on now to Instagram where we saw this uh, report that was trending yesterday. Let's take a look at uh, the report from uh, uh, Instablog Niger. Passengers narrowly escape accident as FROC, FROC official fights driver. Some passengers are lucky to be alive after an FROC official fought their driver for the control of the steering yesterday on the Long Bridge, Bega, Lagos for not parking immediately they asked him to. Given an account of the horrible experience, one of the passengers, passengers said, all they asked the driver was for him to park, which he couldn't do because the place was a bit high. He then asked them, he then asked them to, to drive, for, they didn't ask him to drive forward a bit, only for one of the officers to start hitting the car, while another one opened the car door from the driver's side. Uh, let's take a look at continuation of that report in the next uh, slide. Uh, uh, that's not the bad part, but the fact that the car was still in motion in the middle of the road 
it was just a sad experience to be honest. There was a little traffic, so even if the driver wanted to run, he wouldn't have succeeded. So their action was totally uncalled for. Let's take a look at that video and some of the comments that followed. Chaos and, chaos and confusion there as a road safety official struggles the steering wheel with a driver in Lagos. Let's take a look at the comments uh, from Montero 789. And they are supposed to be called road safety. I don't see anything safe in this act. I'm from Faring Deo Nigbin. They saw this uh, uh, post on uh, Instablog Niger. They should be trained from time to time. But who go pay for the training? <laughs> from Ulua Anto, Nigerians and drama are like five and six. The shouting and the noise past the whole scuffle. And from uh, Osahan official, thank God they haven't approved the license for them to carry ammunition. We would have had several unreasonable deaths, especially in this Lagos. Just Negudu, I'm from Juliet Cruz. Uh, just because of little change, they endanger the lives of people. I weep for Nigeria, my country. Uh, comments from Nigerians, uh, reaction to the video uh, we just watched of a road safety official uh, wrestling uh, the steering wheel with a driver in Lagos. And then uh, we move on. Okay, we see one more comment uh, from uh, Montero 789. Uh, you can't just blame, you can't blame the driver one beef. There are rules of engagement for trained marshals. When you see that the driver is capable of endangering the lives of the passengers, it's totally wrong to join him and drag his steering. You can simply take down his plate number and track the vehicle through registration and find the driver and the consequences would be worse for him. Shikena. And then we move on from that issue now to another issue that was also trending on the social media over the weekend. Uh, the issue of uh, Nigerians uh, uh, trying to preserve uh, beans with sniper. Uh, shocking video. Traders spotted using sniper to preserve beans in the market. Very shocking video. Let's take a look at this video and the comments that followed. The same sniper used for cockroaches now being used to preserve beans that we all eat. Navdak, I hope you are watching. And then uh, comments from Nigerians, uh, Tamo the one, two, three, uh, posting on Insta on Tatafo Niger said, uh, as if stepping on, on the beans that people will put into their delicate stomach is not even enough, they are also using poisonous substance and some Nigerians see nothing wrong. Some are even saying if you wash up a boy, even if wash up a boy, the poisonous substance will gradually and progressively destroy your organs. And before you know it, you hear that someone who was seemingly healthy has food poisoning. And then from Easy Rings, we saw this uh, poster. It's not really harmful because before the beans get to the consumer, the sniper is no longer effective. It's just to prevent those insects from destroying the beans. They use it in the village. If you are too scared, just make sure you wash your beans with hot water before cooking. Interesting comments from Nigerians there. They seem to know a lot about beans and preservation of beans with sniper. 
on this uh, note, we wrap up Kakaki Social this morning. Follow the conversation on all our social media platforms at Kakaki Social on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I am Ohimaya Maiza, your anchor on this segment. Kakaki Social returns tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Handing you over back now to TV and Chico Dinaka. Thank you very much, Ohimai. It, it, it's quite shocking, and you wonder all those kind of things happening and how just just how we're still alive in this country. <laughs> But anyway, it's also perplexing that there was nothing. I mean, the young people all over social media didn't make the ASU strike go viral so far. It's the second <laughs> week into the strike, but hopefully that would happen soon. Uh, hopefully. We're talking ASU strike here, so we'll continue with our discussion. Ahimai, we'll see you later. Thank you very much. Have TV. a great day. All right.